here of Healthy Hobbyists once again. We're going to be doing a slow power class today, a bit similar to my slow flow class that I um, had posted yesterday. So similar props are needed. So make sure you've got a strap if you can in this kind of like little loop tie off at the end with the tail and a block if you've got it. And then things like a blanket is always nice to have on hand too. And whenever you're ready, find your way onto your mat and let's get started. All right, once you're ready and settled on your mat, we'll start with our meditation. Sitting up nice and tall in any seated posture. It doesn't need to be kneeling like I'm in. It can be cross-legged as well. Before you close the eyes, maybe just taking a moment to take in your surroundings. Notice the ground underneath you. Just notice maybe how your mind and body feels now. It's the middle of the day, so maybe it's a bit chaotic. I was running late, <laughs> so I'm already kind of feeling like all over the place. If you feel like that as well, now's a good time. Ground ourselves, let everything outside of this go. And just notice your natural breathing pattern. Now maybe allow the eyes to close. Take one hand over the heart and one hand over the belly. And as you breathe, feel the rise of the body pushing into the hands. And as you exhale, feel the gentle release as your body pulls back and away from the hands. Inhaling to balloon the body up. And exhaling to contract. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take notice of your jaw, relax it as you breathe in. And let your exhale relax your shoulders. Breathe in. Breathe out. Release the hands, let them fall into the lap. As you move through your practice today, know that your breath is always there. If you become distracted, just come back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep staying with this through your practice. Let's start to wake the body up. As you inhale, reach the arms up, look up. As you exhale, take the arms down into a T-shape. Good. Inhale, really open them wide. Send your heart and belly up, so a little bit of a back bend, just like you're in cow pose. And then exhale, round the spine like you're in cat pose. Bring the palms almost to touch. Chin towards the chest. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. Keep going at your own pace. It's okay if you're in kneeling or cross-legged. Any of these positions are fine for this. Really opening big and exhaling to collapse. Good, inhale, come to neutral and release the arms. We gotta pay a lot of attention to our pelvis today. It's really important that we understand how our pelvis needs to tilt for back bend. So take your hands onto your hips. Same movement in the belly. We're just not gonna be opening and closing the arms. So as you inhale, think about tipping your pelvis forward and down. Sticking your belly and heart up and out. Inhale. And as you exhale, round. Now tucking the tailbone opposite of the pelvis. Inhale, rock the pelvis forward. Belly and heart lifts. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Exhale, tuck. 
Do a few more. Just really notice the pelvis here. Good. And then come into neutral here. Good. Let's go ahead and warm up the shoulders. Shrug them up and back a few times. And then forward and down a few times. Good. And then come to sit, extending your legs down your mat. If you've got any blankets or props, now's a good time. Move them out of your way. Good. Taking your hands behind you, bend your knees. Take your feet about as wide as your mat and just kind of swoosh your knees left and right. And then let's take this up a little bit. If you'd like lifting the hips up, doesn't have to be all the way up, just a little bit of a hover, makes this a bit more intense. And we'll get into our wrists as well. Really thinking about dropping that knee into the center, going for that little bit of extra, not putting any pressure on the knee, but really kind of focusing on the hip here. Good. And then coming to stillness, we're going to work on coming into our malasana from seated as best we can. So take your feet and kind of get them close to you, feet as wide as your mat, toes pointing out. Lean back and just kind of rock forward, engage through your pelvic floor, and then go forward and back just a few times. Use your belly. We're going to think about standing up in just a moment. Keep your pelvic floor really engaged. Think about lifting up, up, up into your body. Five. Four, three, two, good, and one. Now we're going to try to get ourselves up if we can. So lean back, use momentum, try to get to your feet. If it doesn't work, use your hands to help you. Use your hands behind you and come back and forth. Otherwise, just use your momentum. Try to control this as best you can. If this is not working at all, you can just come to your malasana and hold it or lift up and down. Up to you. Just a few more of these. Five, four, three, two, and one. Come into your malasana however you can. Sitting it nice and low, encourage the knees out. Then we're going to kind of twist it a bit here. So taking your right hand down to center, reach your left arm up. And then switch it out back and forth, left hand down, right arm up. Using the alternate hand, the hand that's down to really open that knee. Good. Got the trash man here in the background. <laughs> Good, keep going here. Hips are engaged, so we're not sinking in too low. And we're breathing. Five, four, three, two, and one. Take your hands down, fold. Lift your hips up. Take your feet about hip width distance apart and really fold. Let your head be heavy. Good. Bend the knees, inhale, roll on up to standing. And as you inhale, reach up, look up. And then exhale the hands through your prayer. Good. Find your way to the front of your mat. As you inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, fold, come all the way down. As you inhale, halfway lift, straighten the spine, straighten the legs. Exhale, plant the hands. Take it back to your high plank and lower, halfway or all the way. Inhale, upwards or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Good. From downward facing dog, reach your right leg high. Keeping it here for a bit, I want you to reach your left heel really high too. So coming up to the ball of your left foot. Really open that right leg high. So keeping the hips squaring down, but use all of your strength. That last 10%, really lift it, good. Now take your left heel down towards the ground. A few of these up and down. Keeping the right leg really high and taking the left heel up and down, five, Four, three, two, one. Inhale here. Exhale, take your right foot between your front two hands. Come into a high lunge. Take your hands onto your hips for this high lunge. And we're going to make this a really nice and deep low lunge. So try to sink your hips really low. If you need, take your front foot a bit forward. Good. 
And we're going to allow our pelvis to tilt forward and down, just like we were in that cow pose. Now take our arms up, a little bit of a back bend, lift the belly up. Good. Can I have to keep the hands here or have them onto the hips, supporting the back? Good, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one. Reach the arms up, but stay low. Lengthen your pelvis or lengthen your spine. Good. Take your hands onto your front leg. Sink it a little bit lower if you can. Straighten that back leg. Now see if you can send yourself forward and back a bit here. Pointing the left toe and then coming back. Good. Take your hands to the ground and drop your back knee. Good. You can take that movement now to stillness and we're going to come to our half split. So straighten your front leg, dig your right heel and toes towards your face. If you're not able to reach the ground comfortably here, block is a good modification. I want you to sway the hips left and right here. Really dig the right heel in and back. Good. And then come to stillness with it. See if you can fold 10% deeper. Use your core, your belly. Try to get your chest closer to the top of your right leg. Good. Now, if you can, just straighten through the arms. If you've got a block, it'll be helpful for this one. We're going to do our best to try and lift up our front foot. Use your belly, round your spine a little bit, and lift that front foot. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Put it back down. Rebend your front knee. Good. Bend your back knee, that left one, and come into your low lunge. If you need to pad the back knee, pad the back knee. Take the left hand back, grab hold. Just going to start off stretching it. We're going to get a bit deeper later with that strap. Good. Try to get your heel towards your butt. Send yourself really far forward. Let your pelvis release. You don't need to tuck it here. Lift your heart up. Good. Release the back leg. Come into a tabletop position. Take your right leg back. Good. Let's take our right leg out to the right. Toe on the ground. Leg is straight. Good. Now lift that leg straight up. Now take it straight back. See if you can go back and forth. So take it out to the right. Take it back down. Lift it up. Take it back. Take it out to the right. And then tap it down. We're going to do a few of these. Just stick with it. If you need a little bit easier, you can try and bend the knee and just kind of take the knee back and forth, kind of opening. It's a little bit easier. Otherwise, straight leg version. Try to keep yourself centered over your palms as best you can. Now you're going to lean a little bit to the left. Stick with it. I know this is really challenging. We're working really hard. Keep going. We've got one more. Tap it down and then put it back. Come to downward facing dog, hips up and back. Let's come to the other side. Lift your left leg up. Good. Remember lifting that last 10%. So see if you can kick that left leg up higher. Come up high onto your right heel. Inhale. Now pulse it up and down. Take the right heel up and down. That left leg stays really high. Five, four, three. Left leg is high, two, one. Inhale. Exhale, step the left leg through wide. <laughs> Come to your high lunge. Hands are on the hips. Good. 
And again, we're keeping it really low in this one, so try to sink your hips a bit lower. Straighten that back leg as much as you can. Release your pelvis, lift your arms up, back bend. Hey. Good, and just breathe. Option to have your hands on your hips, supporting your low back, if that's better here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lengthen, reach up. Good. If you exhale, just take your hands onto your front knee and just kind of sink a little bit lower. We're going to take ourselves forward and back a bit here. Taking that right toe and kind of pointing onto the tips of the toes and then back to the ball of the foot. Five, four, three, two, and one. Drop your back knee, take your hands to the ground. Good. From here, straighten your left leg, come to your half split. Good. And then sway your hips left and right a bit. Really dig that left heel in, flex the left foot. I think I might have done this out of order. Don't worry, we'll get to the low lunge with the quad stretch. So it happens in your cats, it's on your notebook. <laughs> Good. Now from here again, we're going to try and dig in and lift that front foot. If you've got a block, this will make it a bit easier, but otherwise just do your best. Come onto the tips of your fingers, really cave your belly and use your strength. Lift that front foot. Five, four, flex it. Three, two, one. Put it back down. Rebend your front knee. Let's get that quad stretch in. Come into your low lunge. Take the hands up. Good. Bend your back knee. Right hand comes back. Your left hand can just rest. Give a nice pull to that right leg. Lift your heart up. Really send yourself as far forward as you can go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Take both hands down. Come into your tabletop position. This time our left leg is going to reach out, so the left leg straight out to the left, point the toe, leg is straight. Just lift that leg straight off the ground and then take it back. We're just going back and forth and then tapping the toe down the left. Take it up, take it back, take it to the left and tap it down. Do your best here. Bending the knee is an option to give yourself a little bit of less weight here. When you bend the knee, you're taking the leg and reducing how much leverage you're kind of putting on it. So keep going here, just a few more. Good. Last one, take it out to the left, tap it down, and then take it back. Good. Come to downward facing dog, hips up and back. Reach the right leg up high. Lift that last little 10%, hold it here, five. Lift it even higher, four. Even higher, three, two, and one. Right leg steps between the front two hands, low lunge. Take yourself down. Now we're gonna grab our strap. We're gonna work a little bit further into this, if you've got one. Take it around your left foot, kind of towards the top of the foot if you can. A block accessible will be helpful over onto your right. And if the knee is going to bother you, blanket or fold up the mat. Good. Now from here, take yourself really deep into that lunge. Your hand can be over onto the right side on a block, any setting. Bend your left knee, take the strap over your shoulder. Good. Again, really kind of come to the front of that knee. You don't want to be right on top of the kneecap. Now just give with your left hand a nice pull of that foot. Good. Until it's as in as it's going to get. Now with your left hand, with your right hand holding the strap, left hand grabs as far back as you can. 
Then take your elbow along the ear, point the elbow straight up. Good, now a little bit of a back bend here. Lift the heart up, lift the belly up, and breathe. Keep pulling in as much as you can. Maybe you take in a little bit more slack. Just stick with it, five. Four. Keep pulling, elbow up along the body. Don't let the elbow wing out. Three. Two. And one, release that foot. Good, take both hands to the ground. Move your block out of the way. Take your foot over to the right and send your hips nice and low. Come into that lizard lunge. Hands on the ground. Your knee can open or be hugging in towards the body. The foot can either be flat or you can be on the outer edge of the foot, doesn't matter. Just a little bit of variations. An option to come lower down onto the forearms. Maybe you rest the head down. Good. Come back up onto your palms. Take your right foot over into pigeon. We're not gonna stay here super long and we'll come back to this. Trying to kind of really get into that hip, so maybe trying to square yourself a bit more towards the front of your mat. And then walk your back knee back just a bit. Let's stay nice and upright. Send the hips nice and low and breathe here. If you have a block, take your hands onto the block so you can sit up really tall. Naturally, this is already gonna be a bit of a back bend. Good. Take your hands back down and remove the strap from your foot if it's not already out of your way. Take your hands to the ground, lift your back knee up, and take your right foot all the way over towards the left now, coming to the outside of that right foot. Come into the inside of the left foot, reach the left arm up. Just like you're in a side plank, really elevate the hips. Think about lifting the chest up. Five, four, three, Two, and one, take your left hand down. Stick with this position. Just come back to the toes of your left foot. If you can, sink down into a little chaturanga push-up, hold five, four, three, two, one. Push it up, take the right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. And exhale, release. Good. Take your left leg high, inhale. Let's hold it here. Lift that left leg 10% higher. Five, four, a little higher. Three, a little higher. Two, one. Step it between your front two hands. Drop the back knee. Once again, get yourself set up. I'm going to rotate so you can see the right side. Get the strap set up onto the right foot this time. Good. And if you don't have a strap for this, don't worry too much. You can just grab for the foot. You can just stay in low lunge. But the strap is really handy to have for this that you get a little bit of extra leverage. All right, block over to the left side. Pad the knee if you need. Lunge deeply first. Good. Then get yourself situated. I like to have the kind of little metal part to the bottom of the foot. So when you pull, it's not hurting you. Really send your hips forward and down and pull the foot in as much as you can. Now take that left hand, really kind of pull it in as far as you can. Your right hand is now free to grab as far back, and don't fall, <laughs> as it will go. Now once you've got it, elbow pointing up, find the block on your left side. Really send your hips forward and down. Breathe here, five. Good, squeeze. Everything into the center line. Lift the heart up. Four. It's a back bend, so release your pelvis. Three. Two. And one. Gently release the back foot. Good. Move the block out of your way. Walk your foot over to the left. We're going to come to that lizard lunge. 
adjust as you need. You can move that strap out of your way. Send your hips forward and down option to come down onto the forearms. Just breathe here. Come up onto the palms. Walk your left foot over to the right. We're going to come to that pigeon. Trying to square the shin to the front of the mat a little bit more than maybe you're used to. You don't have to settle the hips all the way down. Option to have the block. No need. Just try to lift the chest up here. Settling the hips nice and low. Just five, four, three, two, and one. Move your block out of the way. Come to your palms. Lift up your back knee. Take your foot, your left foot, all the way through over towards the right. Good. You're on the outside of that left foot. Right foot comes down now to the inside of that foot. Rotate up. Right arm reaches up. Breathe here. Good. Five. Dig your fingertips in. Four. Three. Two. One. Right hand comes down. Just pivot so you're on the toes of your right foot. Keep your left foot where it is. Try. Try to run the push up. Maybe it's just a little bit down. Hold wherever you can. Five. Four, three, two, one. Push it back up. Reach the left leg up and back. Three-legged down dog. And exhale, child's pose. Take your knees wide. Sit back onto the heels. Good. All right, go ahead and come into your tabletop position. We're going to come into our pigeon once again. Have your strap handy for this one because we're going to move into the option for uh, king pigeon. So just take your right knee over to the right and the foot over to the left. This time the foot is in towards the hip. We're not squaring our shin to the front. And I recommend getting something like a blanket and folding it and getting it underneath your hip if your hips are not settled flat. This will help tremendously with your balance in this posture. So here's a couple levels. Follow along as best you can. If you're going to come along further and you've got a strap, get the strap onto the left foot and get the strap over the shoulder just like before. So maybe you just stay here. Maybe you don't use the strap at all. This is plenty. The next level, bend the foot, use the strap, give it a nice pull, pull it in as far as you can. This again is plenty. It's already going to be a big stretch. But if you can, we're going to try and go further. Just like the other version, take both hands, pull the strap in as far as it will go. And then see if your left hand can either reach the foot or it reaches as far back on the strap as you can. And then get the elbow. Point the left elbow up towards the ceiling and then lift the heart up. Breathe here. Find something that you can manage. Five, four, three, two, and one. Super slow, release the foot. Good. Allow yourself to come all the way flat now. Take yourself down to the forearms and relax. All right, let's come on back up to the palms. Walk the back knee in just a bit so that you can lift your hips up. And send your right leg up and back. Three-legged down dog. Open, stack that right hip up. Bend the knee, draw some nice big circles. If you like to flip your dog, feel free here. I don't really have enough space. 
Whenever you're ready, no rush, come to downward facing dog. And then drop the knees back down, tabletop. We're gonna switch it out to the other side. So this time, get the strap onto the right foot and get your left leg into pigeon. So take your left leg forward, knee over to the left, foot to the right, settle your hips down, get your blanket in place if you've got one. Good. Walk will also work in place of a blanket underneath your hip, of course. And then pull the strap over the right shoulder and adjust the strap however you need. And maybe this is as far as you go, just pulling it in. The difference between having the strap and just pulling the leg is the ability to kind of square your hips. Because if you square your hips and you're able to pull maybe a position that you wouldn't be able to do without the strap, you can really start to feel this get into the hip flexor psoas. Good. So once again, pull it as tight as you can. Then the right hand grabs as far back towards the foot as possible. Pull the arm in. Elbow points up. And just breathe wherever you are. Lift the heart up. Lift the belly up. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Nice and slow. Release that back foot. And come down to the forearms. And lie flat. Good, come back up onto the palms. Tuck your back toes under until you're able to lift that left leg up and back. Three-legged down dog. Open your left hip, stack it, bend the knee. Draw some big circles here. Option to flip the dog if you'd like. Good, and then come back to downward facing dog. You can go ahead and move the strap out of the way. Don't need it anymore. And you can move your blanket out of the way if it's in your way. Good. And let's just breathe in downward facing dog. Five breaths. Good. On your next inhale, look towards your hands and jump through to a seated position or just come to seated however you can. Take your legs out in front of you and take yourself wide into a straddle position. Good. We're gonna do a little bit of core work into our hip region and psoas here as well. So take the hands out in front of you. This is gonna be hard, but you're gonna do your best. <laughs> Good. So try not to lean super far back. Lean a bit forward here, hands to the ground, inside the legs. Good. Now embrace through your core, pull it in. See if you can lift the feet up. Try not to lean super far back. Take yourself at least upright. Hover the feet, even if it's just an inch. Hover them. Five, four, three, two, one. Put them down. I know, it's hard. We're going to try again. If your feet don't leave the ground, don't worry about it. If it feels like you're trying to lift them, it's really hard. That's progression. Okay? Eventually, they will lift. Let's go again here. Hands down. Lift the feet up if you can. Circle five, four, three, two. Circle the other way. Five, four, three, two, and release. Good. I know it's hard. These are awful. They're awful for me as well, but they're really effective, strengthening. Especially if you're ever working towards a pressed handstand, this is a great one to work on. All right, take the hands down. We've got another one. You've got it. Press down, lift the feet up. Ten, nine, eight, higher. Seven, six. Straighten the legs if you can. Five, four. Feel them shake. Mine are shaking. Three, two, 
Everyone, <laughs> release. Let's fold into this. Flex the feet and just gently walk the hands forward. If you're on the really tight side, take something like a blanket or a pillow. Sit on the edge of it so that you get a little bit of that forward pelvic tilt. If you're at home and you've got a door frame, again, I say this a lot, but you can always grab onto a door frame. If you're straddling a door, an entryway, then you can pull yourself into this. It's a nice option too. Good. And inhale, come on back up. All right, take yourself back facing the front. If you're not already, bring the legs together. Bend your right knee, send it back at a 90 degree angle, and then bend your left. So if you're in like a pigeon pose with your left leg, so left shin is parallel to the front. If you're not settled on the ground, even remotely, or this is super uncomfortable, elevate your hips. You can sit on something like a blanket. Good. Take your hands down onto your front leg and keep your right knee pressing down. See if you can lift your foot off the ground, really squeeze. If you get a cramping sensation, it's okay. Just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. It will go away. Five, lift the foot up. Even if it's just a little tiny bit off the ground, four, try not to lean super far. Three, two, one, put it down. Good. Open yourself towards your right leg. Now lift your knee up, coming to the bottom of that right foot. So stepping onto the right foot. Good. Open, lifting the knee. Good. Think about lifting the right knee and pushing that left knee down. So kind of like spreading the legs. Good. Just breathe here and release. We're going to lift the foot once again. Turn your chest towards the front. Lift that right foot off the ground. Squeeze. Use your glute. Four, three, two, and one. Once again, turn open towards the right. Hands can come behind you so you can lean back a bit. Lift your right knee up towards the ceiling as best you can. Five, four, three, two, one. Drop it down. Let's switch it out. Take your right shin parallel to the front. Now left leg back. Good. Hands to the front of your right leg. Lean just forward just a bit. Lift that left leg, left foot. Right knee presses down, or sorry, what am I saying? Left knee presses down, left foot is lifting up, even if it's just a hair, five, four, three, two, one. Press it down, hands come behind you. Twist towards your left, lift the left knee up. Good, as best as you can, five, four, three, two, one. Let's come back to center, lift the left foot up, Squeeze here, five, four, three, two, one. Once again, hands behind you, open to the left, lift the knee. Good. Take it back down, take both legs out in front of you. Good, take the legs together, grab hold of your strap, you got it handy. And just lasso your feet if you need. This is just an option, especially if you're on the tight side. You can wrap your hands around it once, twice. We're going to try and keep a flat spine for this one. So sit up super tall. Keep the length in your spine as you pull. Finding a nice big stretch through the back of the legs. Think about drawing your toes towards your face. Relax your shoulders. If you don't need the strap, you can just grab the feet. Press the legs down as best you can and breathe. Good. Move the strap out of the way, sit yourself upright. Point your toes, squeeze your legs together, take your hands, framing your knees. Good. I'm going to turn a bit so you can see the front view. So hands framing the knees here. You're going to lean a bit forward. Inhale and exhale, lean forward. Press down through the fingertips, lift the legs up, 
really hollowing out the body here. Press through the ground. Lift them as high as you can. Just try not to lean back. You start to lose it here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Put them down. Just a little break. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Hands down. Lean forward. Good. Press through the fingertips. Lift the legs. Five. Higher. Four. Three. Two. One. Put them down. Breathe here. Good. Hands framing the foot. Inhale. Exhale. Lean it forward. Press through the fingertips. Lift the feet. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Squeeze the legs. Six. Five. Four. Three. Hold in. Keep doing three. Two. One. <laughs> Press them down. I can't speak do that and count at the same time apparently. <laughs> Take your hands behind you. Fingertips pointing towards your bum. Press your feet to the ground. Knees up to the ceiling. Reverse tabletop. Lift your hips up. Press down through all sides of the feet. Good. And breathe. Let the head release if it would like. Press down through all sides of the feet. Really lift the chest up. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice and slow. Let the hips come back down. Good. Shrug the shoulders. Relax for a moment. We're going to do another one of those. Take the hands behind you. Feet to the ground, lift the hips up. Good. Really press through all sides of the feet. Let the head release if it wants. Five, four, three, two, and one. Drop the hips down. Release the arms for a moment, a few shrugs of the shoulders. Good. Take both legs out in front of you. Cross the right leg all the way over the left, stacking the knees, taking the foot, bending the knee over towards the left. The turn so you can see a different point of view. So stacking the knees here as best you can, left leg is extended. Option to just fold forward here or come to the full position, bending that bottom knee, coming into the cow face. Good. And of course, if you know my classes, I often teach a lot of hip variations. This is not a great pose for everybody. So if you know it's not a great pose for you, take an alternative stretch. Something like a reclined pigeon on your back is a nice option. Take your right arm up if you're in the full cow face position. Bend the elbow. Take the hands into the small behind your back. Take the left hand up the back. Grab hold, interlacing the fingers. If that doesn't work. Left hand can come to the elbow. And just breathe here. Try to lift the chin away from the chest. Good. Hug the elbow in towards the head. Try not to let it wing out. Good. And of course, we do have a strap handy, so if this isn't working, this is always a nice one to do with a strap. Take about four more deep breaths here. Good. Release the shoulders and gently lean back so you can release the legs. And then switch it out. Take your left leg over the top, kind of walking the foot over towards the right. Knees are stacking. This is option one. You can just fold here. Otherwise, that bottom knee also folds. And again, if this is not a good position for you, something like a seated pigeon is a really nice variation that tends to work for most folk. Good. Our hip joints are really unique. So that's why there's so many hip stretches and why for some people, 
Something like this will feel super easy. For some, this feels impossible. It's not a matter of flexibility in all cases. In some cases, it's just a matter of bone to bone. It cannot rotate in that way. Good, let's add the arms. Take the left arm up, pat yourself on the back. If you'd like having the strap, grab a strap into the left hand. Otherwise, right arm reaches up the back. Good, interlace the fingers if you can. Some things to be mindful of here. We tend to kind of crunch and let our chin drop. Try to lift the chin away from the chest. And then we wing out our shoulders. So try to keep that left arm hugging in. And breathe. Good, release that. Shrug the shoulders a few times. Take your hands behind you. Release the legs. Take them wide into a straddle position once again. But take the right leg in now. Good. Take your arms up and twist towards your right. So you're facing towards your right knee. Good. Notice your left hip will probably want to lift up. Your glute's going to want to lift. Push it back down. Good, now side bend over to your left. Left hand comes towards your foot, finds the ground, or it can find your leg, either one, or a block. <laughs> right arm reaching long towards that left foot. With the goal just being reaching long, don't worry so much about, oh my gosh, my foot, is it there, is it not? It is there whether you reach it or not, I assure you. And what we're really looking for is pressing our right sit bone down so that we lengthen from our hip all the way to the tips of our right fingers. Keep rotating the heart and chest up, not collapsing down. Good, inhale, come on back up. Gently switch it out. Take your left leg in, right leg out. Arms up. Twist to the left. Right sit bone, put it down. Good, side bend over towards the right. That right hand can kind of find the ground or it can just rest on the leg. Left arm is reaching long. Again, our left sit bone, left side of our butt. Press down, left arm reaches long. Good, inhale, come on back up. As you exhale, bring both legs in, face the front of your mat once again, unless you already are, and come onto your back. We're gonna come into bridge and we have the option to come into wheel today. We've warmed up our back, we've warmed up our shoulders, our legs, everything is pretty warm. Let's start with the bridge first. And I'll give you the option for wheel in just a moment. So take the feet hip width distance apart, press down through the feet, lift the hips up. Just bridge. Hands are by your side. Think about pressing down through the toes, sending your weight more towards your chest. And that's important to think about because when we come into wheel, we want that same feeling. Good. Settle the hips back down. All right, if you want to try wheel, let's go through it. I'm not gonna give a full big demo today, we're almost out of time, but if you're pretty comfortable, then we'll go through it together. If you reach your hands up towards the sky with your palms facing towards your feet, bend your elbows like you got chaturanga arms, and then find your fingertips onto the ground, kind of by your ears, elbows pointing up. Flatten the palms, good. First things first, those elbows, try not to wing them out. Keep them pointing up towards the ceiling, good. Feet position shouldn't have changed, good. 
Now lift the hips up, maybe just come to the crown of the head. This is a good place to stay. Otherwise, push through the palms, lift the hips up, lift the heart up. Now, that pushing through the toes, remember that. Keep pushing through the toes, send your weight in towards your hands, and breathe here. Hold this as long as you'd like. Come down whenever you need. Press down through the fingertips, five, four, three, two, and one. Gently come down to the head, or just tuck the chin towards the chest and come down all the way. Shake out the wrist for a moment. And just let that back bend settle. Take a few breaths here. Maybe take your soles of your feet together, knees wide. Close your eyes. Back bends can feel really intense in the body, so it's normal for the heart rate to go up. And just notice your breathing. Ready, let your leg extend down your mat coming to your Shavasana. Let your legs rest away from one another. Let your arms open by your sides, palms facing up. Allow your eyes to close. Let your hands be soft. Breathe into your belly. And exhale all of your stresses. Breathe in. Breathe out the mouth. Letting go. Breathe in. And out. Return to normal breathing.
nice gentle inhale. And as you exhale, start to move through your fingers and toes. Reach your arms overhead. And relax for another moment. Bend your knees. Pull your knees in towards your chest. Hug the fronts of the shins. And just rock yourself gently side to side. And then roll yourself all the way over onto your right side, resting your head. Breathe into your belly here. Breathe out your mouth. Come to seated. Moving nice and slow, letting your head come up less. Once you're in seated, nice and tall, long through the spine, lift your head, chin parallel to the ground. Let your jaw be relaxed. Breathing out of the mouth to release any extra anxiety or stress. Let your chin fall towards your chest. Take your hands and interlace them behind your head. Let the arms be heavy, stretching, now rounding the spine. Get yourself around, knees towards the elbows, or yeah, elbows towards the knees. Breathe in deep. And then release the hands, roll up to seated as you inhale. Gently opening the eyes. Take the hands to prayer. Take a deep inhale. Exhale out the mouth. Thank you so much for joining me, namaste. Thanks again, as always, Kat from Healthy Hobbyists. If you have any questions or requests, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to oblige. Hips and back were a bit of a request this week. And if I don't hear from you or see you, then have a wonderful rest of your week. But I do have a full schedule up. I think I'm doing, if I remember correctly, yoga core tonight. So we're at work. Again, if you like this class, thumbs up, let me know, or comment, let me know you're here. Bye. <laughs> My hair is messy. Is that a good class? Huh? Hey? That's a good class. Good. I like that. That looks really cute in there, too. Thanks once again for joining me again. My name is Kat from Healthy Hobbyist. I am making these videos for free, but if you like them, please donate or subscribe or share them. Any of those things are super helpful for me um, and help keep me motivated. You can also visit my site. I do a lot of other stuff than just yoga, a lot of crazy stuff. So check it out, healthyhobbyist.com. See you next time. <laughs>